have been cut on the nose. Down on the ice they go as McCormick teed off on Jason Strickland. Hey everybody, welcome to the Hockey Family Podcast. I'm Tyson Strachan, and those clips you just heard were some of the tougher life lessons that I learned through my hockey career. Uh, We created this podcast in the hopes to uh, let other hockey players share some of their uh, tough lessons, their good lessons, uh, all the advice that they've, uh, you know, been given throughout their careers and lives that got them to this point and hope that it's uh, helpful to other hockey players out there. Um, As always, I'm joined by uh, my former college D partner, uh, CFA, CFP, uh, founder of the Players Wealth Group, Johan Kroll. Yeah, thanks, Drex. And uh, we're, we're excited. We're actually up in the mountains right now in North Carolina on um, a little bit of a you know a company retreat, I guess you could call it, kind of a little getaway to talk about things that yeah you know, we, we thought we did well last year and uh, things we can maybe do a little better. And um, yeah, you know, well, while we're up here, David was uh, D- David Backus um, was kind enough to to join us for a little bit of time to discuss his life and, and hockey career. And uh, of course, David was uh, a teammate of, of yours for a while. And he's actually a teammate of mine too, like 30 years ago in peewee hockey. So um, it was, it was, it was fun visiting with David and, um, you know, j- just, just uh, an all around good guy, you know, family man, just, just had a lot of really good insight and, and wisdom to share with the hockey community. So um, I, 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 I think it, uh, w- it was a really nice um, episode. Uh, David, of course, uh, you know, being out of the game now for a, a year and a half um, has, has stayed busy, right? Um, yeah, health and fitness is really big to him. So uh, yeah, he mentioned that he ran a marathon, which is, I don't think you're going to be doing that anytime soon. Um, also in terms of nutrition, right? He, he, he's opened a couple of restaurants called Stock and Spade in, in the uh, Minneapolis area. So um, uh, re- really neat, um, idea there with, with some plant-based food. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he'd be happy to, to, to talk about that in more detail as well. And then, uh, where you and David have a really close connection as well is, is through his organization, Athletes for Animals that he and his wife, Kelly have, um, just done a really nice job with, uh, for, for, a, for a number of years. So, um, really fun episode. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously you mentioned Athletes for Animals that, uh, was a bonding, Piece for uh, you know David and I, but uh, my wife Kate and Kelly, um, a big influence in our lives, and uh, yeah, I've been lucky enough to call David uh, a friend for close to twenty years, I guess, mm-hmm. which uh, really dates mm-hmm. us. And <laughs> start talking about your peewee days, so yeah. um, I think it was a great episode, and uh, we hope that uh, people enjoy it. Yeah, let's get to it. Kids are off to school. It's such a beautiful thing to have. Uh, five or six hours with no kids around to accomplish some tasks that otherwise are uh, much more difficult with a few little ones hanging around. uh, A little bit with Christmas holidays and just getting back. A little bit of catch up early this week, but feel like we're in a good place now. And um, it's been actually rainy here for a few days. So it's supposed to dry out today and enjoy a little of the outdoors the way that we haven't been able to since we were home in, in Minnesota for a lot of the holidays and rainy since we've been here. Yeah, it was cold up there. I was actually in Minnesota too, David. You know, my parents, I, well, we, we played, um, most people know that Strax and David played together. David and I actually played, we were uh, peewee teammates together back in 1990 something, but um, it was cold up in Minnesota around Christmas time. Sure was. And then, and then a dumping of snow. So we got the full experience and the, the kids were uh, indifferent on whether or not they liked it or not. Uh, they certainly enjoy being on their iPads when they're stuck <laughs> inside, but we like when they get outside and they can play for a while. Yeah, it takes a little more effort of uh, trying to get them to do some of those activities, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. I know you went skiing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was, I don't know, with hockey being such a big part of you know my life, like I, I went skiing for the first time after I was done playing hockey. I was yeah, like yeah. age age 32, uh-huh. I think, and... So I actually went skiing for the second time and this, you know, Minnesota skiing doesn't really count. It's, uh, but it was fun taking my, my kids out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about you, David? First year out of hockey. Is there 
things that you you picked up? Well, year year yeah. two um, in in progress, so year and a half out of hockey, and yeah, I've I've started to find some other hobbies. I've found uh, a little bit of a workout routine that works for me, and um, just different, I'd say, physical goals to accomplish. My I ran a marathon in early November. That's been on my bucket list, so I knocked that off. Um, I'm in Southern California after the trade to Anaheim, and. Uh, we really love the snow, uh, the sun and, and being away from the snow. So I've picked up surfing once a week with a neighbor and, um, you know, just staying active. And after the marathon, now Kelly said I got too skinny to <laughs> run the marathon. So I'm trying to, trying to put some meat back on the bones and, uh, finding some joy in doing that again. I, I think I feel best when I lift and a little less cardio and, uh, it's been a, we're getting into a bit of a routine. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's definitely a bit of a journey. You know, in that uh, post career, trying to figure out what works for me and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she. It was a tough sell for her to be when I, you know, first said I'm done to be like I don't want to work out at all. I, someone's made me work out for the past 25 years, and you know what? No one's making me work out anymore. I'm not going to do it. And she looked at me like I would, had three heads. So that lasted probably two or three months. And then I was like, okay, I want to feel normal again and get back to at least being physically active a little bit. Cause there's some serenity that comes from that. So true. Yeah, that's very true. And you see all my Peloton workouts. So those have been mountain up, right? Few and far between, right? Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to hold that one. I, yeah. The, uh, I, I did hear your Peloton sent you a message and said said it missed you. So let me know when you want to hook up on there and have a little yeah, challenge. We've uh, had a household that keeps talking about the Peloton. Now we both need to get back on it. And uh, yeah, trying to balance that work life with uh, the workout stuff is still something. You know, I'm this is four years, I guess. You know, fourth season that I'm out. I'm still searching for. So you, you did a pretty good job here. On year two, and you're already finding that balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's an expensive uh, spot to hang your clothes and your towels to dry for sure. So <laughs> you might as well use it for its purpose. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, <laughs> as you know, with the the podcast, we're going to go through some of the uh, like best advice you've ever received. So we're going to kind of start in uh, on best advice you ever received in your hockey career. You got. Mm. Well, I, I can I can take this two ways. There's a the politically correct yeah, uh, don't do that way, one. which was my first. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the brief story on that. My college coach pulled me in and said, "If you're going to be a leader, um, none of these guys are going to care how much you know until they know mm. how much you care." And to me, that that stuck with me. Obviously, it's still stuck with me, and just that you can't just preach to guys and hit them over the head with stuff you think they should do until you have a, a base of a relationship and, and they know that you, you know, genuinely care about them and their success and how that's going to fit into the team success. The non-politically correct uh, advice that I got was in the pro ranks when uh, a guy who was influential in my career and his wife, we were out to dinner with them and, and he said, they both said that never feel guilty for anything you get from this game because you give a lot and when you get into the game and before you're in the NHL or or professional sports, you just think all those big contracts and, you know, I don't know, even you just, you think it's the dream and that those guys not don't earn it, but that they're grossly overpaid. And while it seems like that on paper, by the time your career's over and how banged up you are and, and, you know what, there's a market for your skills. And if you can get paid well for it, then you should be compensated well for it and not to feel guilty for it. So I think that advice, you know, well, it's not the end all and be all. Um, there's, there's certainly other goals, but I think that advice also was like, clued me into the business side of the game that is so often not talked about and not discussed uh, openly or, you know, just amongst players that, it's a business and if you can market yourself or put yourself in position to be compensated well then it's a a route that's not 
you know, it shouldn't be frowned upon to to go after, you know, those big contracts and, and what Gosh, you can it's earn. such a great point and um, re- re- really good insight. And I think it transitions well into, um, you know, the next question we had was just, you know, kind of what, what, what's the best advice you've received, um, you know, just in terms of finances um, and, and um, a- any thoughts there? Yeah, uh, my my father in law, who's uh, ailing from dementia, unfortunately, right now. But uh, when I first met my wife, and you know, you're getting to know the the father in law, and it's a little awkward at times. But he was a, a or is a you know a, a wise businessman, and he he from an early age said, if you can't pay cash for it, you can't afford it. And uh, there have been times throughout my life where I wish I would have listened to that more and really stuck by that maxim. Um, but it's proven true in so many areas that cash is king. And if you can't pay cash for it, you likely can't afford it. Um, you know, there's maybe some small exceptions for that. If that's a, a, a mortgage or on a home or something like that, but the idea of being over leveraged and, and have so many, you know, there's so many ways to enjoy things now and pay for them over time that, I, I just think that was so wise, and if if we all implemented a little more of that, it uh, it likely puts us in better position. That's and that that's excellent advice, and 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 we've talked about a lot um, at the office. But like one one of my fears, especially as easy as credit's been, you know, with interest rates being as low as they were up until like a year ago, right? Like, I mean, borrowing was basically yep. free, you know, for the last you know better part of the last decade. And, and I, I think, um, unfortunately, I think a lot of people have just become accustomed to that kind of in a habit of, yeah, like, let's just get a loan on this loan on that, which, which might be okay when interest rates are one, two, 3%. But now you see, you know, with, with inflation and the fed fighting inflation and yield spiking, like now the cost of capital, right? The cost to borrow might be five, six, 10, you know, now credit cards are well north of 20%. Um, you know, my, 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 my hope, and we try to you know, share that message. Like you need to be so careful in, um, uh, when, when, when you go to borrow money. So r- r- really, yeah, there's, there's, there's a delayed gratification. I think also that, um, a, you're not making spontaneous decisions, but B, I think when you say you want a new car and you say, I want a new car tomorrow and you could go out there and leverage and, you know, pay whatever the the rate is on a car loan, or you could say, I want a new car and here's how I'm going to save for the next 12 months to get it. Well, when you finally get that car, you appreciate it more, you relish it, you, you know, treat it like it's a baby. And, you know, it's not just another thing that you just added to the list. So for me, I think there's so many wise, you know, fallouts from pay with cash. And if that means you got to you got to put a plan together for a year or two years or whatever, or put your list of wants on, on a piece of paper and say, here's how I'm going to knock them down. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of wisdom and, and good, you know, good, just moral, um, you know, feelings and, and ways to live your life that, that comes from that. I think that's, so, that, that's just, uh, that, that's great. I, I think, um, yeah, it's uh, especially in the uh, well, I was gonna say hockey world, but athlete world in general. I mean, you kind of mentioned it in the first question. It's such a razor thin line, you know, between having the twelve year career or, or you know what can happen. So living by that kind of guide that your father in law kind of instilled in you, you know, it's it's pretty. Uh, you know, it can be cut off pretty quickly and we all kind of figure that mm-hmm. out. So if you're kind of putting off everything till later that uh, all of a sudden you proved over and, and you're looking back and going, okay, I got to pay for this and this and this. So it's, that's, <laughs> you're not caught in that kind of peril. So it's, uh, I think, pretty great advice. Yeah. yeah, I'd say that even, that drove me early in my career when I was on my entry-level deal. Uh, I had a clause in, in my deal that, Every 10 games, I'd get a, I think it was a $15,000 bonus uh, my first year, and I think it was 10 the second year. And I'd always have little carrots for myself at the end of, you know, those 10 game segments of like, made another 10. Okay. 
uh, whatever, I'm going to go to a, I'm going to go to a nice dinner tonight and, and not, you know, not look at the prices on which steak is more expensive at the time when I was yeah. crushing meat. Um, so though just, just little things all of a sudden can be drivers to, to, to continue success and continue that, uh, you know, that encouragement to, to get to different levels. That's awesome. Um, D- David, we, we, uh, we know you've got a busy week, so you know we appreciate you carving out time. Uh, just one last question here. Just uh, you know, we you gave us a great, great insight on on hockey and finances. You know, what about just kind of life in general? Um, you know, just just advice for what, whether it's younger guys or um, guys kind of wrapping up their careers. Yeah, just just life in general. Um, best advice you've received. Oh. Now we're, now we're getting deep into the, into the life, uh, life guidance. Um, you know what, I, I, being a, being a Christian guy, I think the idea that <clears throat> you need to be rooted in something deeper or more meaningful than a sport or some statistic or something that can be here today and gone tomorrow, because everything likely will be gone at some point, certainly in professional sports, there's a useful life of everyone <clears throat> you know if you if you play to your mid to late 30s that's a, a heck of a run um and so i think finding worth and finding your meaning in something other than just the sport you're playing certainly don't slack on any of the investment you make into what you're doing to be your best and not have any regrets at the end of it but you know who you are isn't necessarily defined by a stat line or what you're doing to produce um you know another piece of advice i got from the chaplain in uh in boston is he said when you when you leave a uh, a conversation or a, a run in with somebody they don't necessarily remember what you said or how you said it they remember how you made them feel and can you care for each person you come into contact with can you make them feel like um, they're meaningful and that they have worth and that, um, you know, there's some connection there. And to me, those people, and obviously we're, we're chatting today. uh, It's been probably 20 years since Johan and I played together and, you know, Strax and I lived in St. Charles at the same time in in St. Louis, probably 15 years ago, maybe, you know, a few, 10 at least. And so, the people you meet and those relationships outlast the activity you're doing. And those relationships are invaluable. And obviously we're, we're regrouping on a, on a lighter note and, and doing this podcast, but um, you know, all those people that say one of us was down in the dumps, you'd hope that we're intertwined enough to reach out and to seek sound advice from somebody else so that we can be picked up with all the mental health and, and other issues that are, seemingly you know endemic levels in in the u.s and all over the world that you create that safety system or that safety net and that group of people that care about you and can pick you up when things are down and celebrate in your successes as well when things are up so um i think that's the circular way going about of of saying care for people uh you know love people and and in the end that's what i think our bigger calling is outside of playing a sport and doing doing what we do for a profession beautiful yeah that's huge advice and obviously it's so important in these relationships that we've built i mean are are definitely the the most positive side of the game right uh you can look back on the i think you might have been light on your maps in 10 10 20 years i'm just forgetting how old we are uh, (laughs) you know all the people that we've met over those years and, and I know just obviously the relationship, you know, built with you and we've built, you know, our families together. It lasted uh, a long time. I know you always pick up the phone. So we really appreciate you doing this podcast. We think that, you know, it's important to get these messages out there. I think the world's, as you kind of mentioned, full of a lot of uh, mis- misinformation and other things that are going on. So it's good to have good sound advice and, and i think you gave three awesome answers yeah awesome awesome really appreciate you taking the time david it's yeah. fun catching up you know yeah. 
Yeah, likewise to you, gentlemen. Well, thank you again, David, and have a fantastic day. Through this podcast, the information provided by the Hockey Wealth Group is for educational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, or legal advice. You should consult a financial professional familiar with the specific circumstances of your unique financial situation before making any financial decisions. Nothing in this broadcast constitutes a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mentioned rates of return are historical or hypothetical in nature and are not a guarantee of future returns. Johan Kroll, CFA, CFP, and Tyson Strachan, MBA, are investment advisor representatives of Oceanside Advisors DBA, the Hockey Wealth Group, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.